Hope you're happy, very well indeed. Now today, this is Magic Mike Pank again. I'm very well indeed. Say we the vlog vlog. One of the great, amazing legends of magic history and illusions. His name is Harry Houdini, okay? So let's vlog vlog for the next few minutes or so. The legend of magic, okay? Of the 20th century. He really was the world's greatest illusionist, greatest magician, escapologist of all time. He died nearly 100 years ago in 1926. He's a great Harry Houdini. Let's vlog and vlog. Houdini, the legend of all time magic. Here we're gonna go. Indeed, Magic Mike back again. I'm going to go quite slow today because people keep saying I go a bit fast. So if you're reading the subtitles, I'm going to go a bit slow in case you're reading in, in subtitles, okay? I <laughs> so hope you're very well indeed. Okay, it's Monday morning here in August or late July in 2021. And I'm very sad to say my dad unfortunately passed away about two weeks ago. So I'm going to dedicate the video partly to him. But I'll do a dedication to my dad a little bit later on. Okay, another, another video. Let's vlog a blog the amazing magician born in 1874, Harry Houdini. Now, Harry Houdini came from Hungary in, of course, uh, in 1874. He went to America uh, as a kind of immigrant. And uh, he kind of was a very young guy. His name was Eric Weiss. Okay, Eric Weiss. And he basically, he loved a French magician called uh, Jean-Eugène uh, Robert Houdin, okay? And he took uh, Robert Houdin's name, because Robert Houdin was a really legendary French magician. He created amazing illusions and magic tricks performed in Paris in the middle uh, 19th century and was really the father of modern magic. And basically, everyone in magic circles and worlds really loves Robert Houdin. That's basically the truth. And Houdini absolutely loved Robert Houdin as well, all right? He took the name Houdin, H-U-D-I-N, added an I and called himself Houdini. They sound like Robert Houdin. So this guy, Eric Weiss, became Houdini, okay? And of course, it's very, very uh, fascinating. He was born April 24th, 1874. So it was really amazing, uh, amazing, this guy, uh, the life this guy had. And his life was always really rather charmed, okay, Harry Houdini, okay? You probably know Houdini. You probably heard about him in movies and films and books and TV shows about Houdini. He's that famous, isn't he? And just about every magician in the world, from Paul Daniels to David Blaine to David Caulfield, everybody, Chris Angel, probably, you know, his influence in some way or does a trick that's been either created or inspired by Harry Houdini. He's a pretty amazing guy, isn't he? Houdini was a legend because he was the first magician to get into magic and illusions and then moved from that to actually be doing escapology. That was to do groundbreaking, death-defying escape stunts. And he was the first guy to ever do that. It's probably the reason why Harry Houdini is kind of seen as a legend of magic and a theatre and illusion for the last 150 years. So it's all very fascinating, isn't it, as I say. Now, Houdini did a number of uh, escapes. He actually moved from magic and did a lot of magic shows and magic tricks in the early 1900s, and right just before World War I. And basically, he, did so. he went into doing escapes. He really got into escapes. He would do, um, basically challenge people to escape from handcuffs. He would get handcuffs put on him, put in prison cells. He would be stripped head to toe with just a pair of pants on, basically very almost naked. Checked head to toe for any lock picks and wires and that kind of stuff. He'd be stuck in the prison cell and he would escape from a prison cell though he was virtually naked. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? He, I think in England he was put into some regulation, special brand new regulation handcuffs on stage that were meant to be invincible handcuffs. And again, he would escape from the handcuffs, you know. Pretty amazing stuff isn't it this guy was amazing wasn't he as i say he was did pretty amazing stuff now some of the other big illusions he did was hanging from uh, an upside down rope okay he would hang in public okay high up, about 100 feet up in the air upside down from a rope in a straight jacket again he would do this escape quite regularly in public places in the usa and also he did in the uk and there's a bit of footage here of him performing that upside down okay the upside down escape hanging from a rope now that escape was taken forward by a magician called Alan Allen in the 20th century, he was a friend of mine. Alan Allen did the same upside down escape from a rope, but he would do it with a rope on fire, okay? And that was Alan Allen's interpretation. Alan Allen died about seven years ago. 
2014. But Alan Allen, his interpretation of Houdini's upside down rope escape was done with a burning rope. The same skates were done by Dan Caulfield as on some of my videos. Check out, I think, Caulfield uh, 15, the, um, the, the show with Caulfield uh, escapes from a burning rope. Okay, it's on one of my videos. Check it out. Uh, from 1993, that again, the same illusion again, where Caulfield hangs upside down from a burning rope over a bed of spikes. It's done by many magicians, Copperfield, Hans Moretti has done it, Alan Allen did it, many magicians have done the upside down burning rope escape. But that was initially, the initial upside down escape was created by Harry Houdini about 120 odd years ago, so it's pretty amazing. <laughs> straight jackets escape from cells he also escaped from milk churns he would put in a milk churn and he would be sealed in a milk churn full of milk paddocks on the outside of the milk churn he would escape from that as well all right it was a pretty impressive trick wasn't it i think it was using a fake milk churn but very impressive indeed houdini also did the invented it along with that the buried alive illusion again many magicians have done buried alive this is where you're literally buried about uh, three or three feet below the ground like you're buried if you're dead and basically they put them in a sarcophagus put it about three feet into the ground cover the whole sarcophagus with soil and mud and muck and the magician would, would emerge from actually from the, the basically from the grave okay escaping from the sarcophagus he was tied up in again who did he invented that illusion again and did that himself as well okay <laughs> and he's also but who did his probably most amazing illusion illusion that probably he was known for he performed probably around about 1920s or so 1910s particularly was the chinese water torture cell okay now this was the classic illusion we'll talk about that in a minute okay and also how houdini tragically died because he died a little bit young and basically anyway houdini would be trapped upside down in a glass tank of water we'll talk about that one in a minute and also houdini's very sad death okay 1926 on halloween but anyway most interesting there okay it's interesting stuff isn't it basically with houdini the water torture to cell was his big illusion of his stage show and in fact i think he was quite frightened of doing it um let's talk a bit about houdini's interest outside the magic as well he went he was also quite pioneering he was he worked in cinema did a couple of films okay uh in the 1900s or 1910s or so during world war one he made a couple of movies that they were big hits because he didn't find he was making any money out of film it was the very early days of hollywood very early days of movies indeed and he was making a couple of movies he also wrote a couple of books as well about magic all right so it's quite interesting so you want to google look at the books that Har harry houdini wrote about magic all right now houdini was also in spiritualism believe it or not he was fascinated by what happened after you die and whether or not we would contact each other in the, in the next world all right and he used to go to spiritualists and watch spiritualists perform. But by about 1920 into 1926, the last few years of his life, he became disillusioned with spiritualism and started to do, try and debunk these um, spiritual seances because he thought they were doing, being done by fakers. And often these spiritualists would attach, would have a wrapping table and they would talk to the ghosts and the ghosts would wrap away, bang, 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 bang. And often it was actually done by a bit of mechanics, like a mechanical device underneath the table, which would wrap and bang the bottom of the table thus creating the illusion that there was a ghost tapping the table and that was a typical a kind of trick that these illusionists these seances the clairvoyance spiritualists would actually do all right who did kind of would discover that. the other thing that they would do Dini would try and debunk was uh, it was a thing, a thing called ectoplasm apparently where the, the the spiritualist would produce kind of like a hand made of a kind of weird waxy material okay and they called it ectoplasm and no one could figure out where these spirit hands would, would come from but in fact of course it was often who would debunk them and often these guys these uh, spiritualists would would get some put their hand in a boiling 
in a hot sort of hot vat of wax, pull that out behind the scenes, put it in cold water, and then pull it off, and you get a kind of a kind of little kind of copy basically made out of wax of your hand. Okay, they'll do this under dark when the audience couldn't see properly, and it'll give the impression that there's wax in the creator by dipping wax in a, in a in a hot bucket and in a cold bucket, it would create kind of wax thing around the hand. It give the impression a hand of a spirit hand had appeared made from a, a weird material called ectoplasm, but it's actually just wax. Okay, it's all it was, and Houdini would kind of do debunk this and try and prove it you know these things that float these wax productions of ectoplasm were fake and you know table wraps were fake and also things like for example spirit messages and were fake people had something mechanical thing in the shoe making a noise was fake all these things that he would try and debunk also Houdini became friends amazing enough with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle okay who of course you would know wrote Sherlock Holmes books about 100 years ago or so Conan Doyle was a really brilliant genius of a writer he wrote Sherlock Holmes that came lived in the UK and Conan Doyle actually was obsessed with Houdini who he met in London in the UK and Conan Doyle actually thought Houdini had spiritual power so he could actually melt his way spiritually through boxes and through walls and that kind of stuff but of course ultimately um, of course, Houdini was just an illusionist, and again, they get, I think there was a bit of a wedge between in the relationship between Houdini and Conan Doyle, because Houdini and Conan Doyle, Conan Doyle was really didn't believe, did did believe in seances, and Houdini didn't believe in seances and spiritualism, and they had a bit of a clash about that. Apparently, fell out a little bit, but nevertheless, okay, um, it was a fascinating relationship Conan Doyle had. Um, as I say, and he was a bit naive, Conan Doyle, wasn't he? But it's a fascination relationship he had with Houdini, of course. Houdini, of course, was a magician illusionist. Conan Doyle, of course, was a writer. And Houdini didn't really, really believe in the end in seances. But he's interested in life after death. Conan Doyle did believe in seances and spiritualism. So it's quite an interesting relationship that he they had together, didn't they? It's very interesting indeed. Houdini also, going back on the illusionist business, Houdini also, I think was the first magician vanishing elephant, okay? And Houdini's vanishing elephant has been done by many magicians since. In fact, the same principle, vanishing elephant, elephants brought on stage, you know, a massive elephant, put big screens around the elephant, the screens drop down and the elephant disappears. Again, that's been done by many magicians. The same principle Houdini used 120 years ago to vanish an elephant was done by Seep and Roy in their magic show in the 1980s and 90s, okay, all right? So it's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's got to be said. I love this stuff, don't you? It's very fascinating, isn't it? So Houdini was an illusionist, an, es an escapologist, okay, uh, uh, interested in, in spiritualism and, and that kind of stuff. Now, Houdini, of course, as we know, Houdini was very, um, as I say, very interested in um, life after death. And even after he, he, he when he, he said to his wife, his lovely wife Bess, that if he, if he, when he died, if he could communicate from the dead back to her, he would do. And every year after he, um, after 1926, when he died, his his wife Bess used to do seances. So about ten years after he died in 1926. 
and she was hoping to contact him after Houdini died, but unfortunately there was no real evidence that Houdini ever contact her, contacted her after he died, which is very sad. And of course it gives us a bit of a worry about spiritualism, whether people can contact you from dead or not, okay? But nevertheless, okay, Bess's beautiful wife did try, and she was a very devoted wife, Bess did try and contact Houdini after he died in 1926, okay? Using spiritualism and seances, okay? It's very interesting stuff, isn't it? Now the other thing as well is Houdini's fascination with the Chinese water torture cell illusion, okay? Now this Chinese water torture cell illusion was a really pioneering illusion back in the 1900s because basically Houdini would be put upside down in a, in a piece, a big sort of um, big, big box made of glass filled with water. He'd be trapped upside down, often with a chain as well, chain hands, upside down in this big tank of water, sealed with his feet, sealed in stocks. Honestly, completely sealed inside this box. They put a curtain in front of the box, in front of the, of, of the, of the audience. The curtain would rise up. Houdini would escape literally in seconds, okay? He'd be sitting cross-legged on top of the box. It was amazing, okay? Everything was examined, the box was examined, the locks were examined, the, the tires were examined, the stocks were examined. No one could figure out how Houdini got out of the water torture cell, but he did, okay? Now, there's a version, again, I'll show you this, done by Paul and Martin Daniels about 35 years ago on television in the UK. Here's a version of Houdini's Chinese water torture cell done uh, by Paul and Martin Daniels about 35 years ago. It's really impressive using exactly the same size water torture cell as Houdini did, okay? These guys even went, okay, um, to get that bit of film footage there. Um, the actual the original Chinese water torture cell, this is interest you, was held in the Museum of Magic and Niagara Falls in Canada. And I think the BBC in UK went to Canada, actually got the original water torture cell that Houdini used to use, and they kind of built a copy of it and used that on the TV show in the UK. So that version you see there is really very close to the original water torture cell version that Houdini did back in the 1900s and 1920s or so. Very fascinating indeed. The Lucian Water Torture Cell has been done by David Goffield, okay? All right. I'll show you a clip in a minute of that. And also, I'll show you a bit of that now, actually, but let's see, where David Goffield is the same Chinese Water Torture Cell. And also it was done by Doug Henning as well, another big American illusionist back in the 70s. He did that illusion as well. Pretty amazingly too. Pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? Okay. So it's been done by many illusionists. I think I've seen a lot of people do the Chinese Water Torture Cell in various different guises. Sometimes the magician disappears entirely from the cell and appears somewhere else in the audience. Then Doug Henning's version, he vanished from the cell and appeared as a, a person dressed in a masked robe, a cow on the side of the stage. So there's quite a few versions of the Chinese Water Torture Cell. It's that great an illusion, okay.
and some people have, I think even Paul Daniels in his shows back in the 1980s did the, did the illusion twice with some Martin Daniels because it's a really great illusion to do the Chinese watch watch itself. Now of course we know back in the um, in the 1950s, I think, 52 or so, Tony Curtis starred in the film Harry Houdini, okay? Which is the really only big movie we've ever made about Houdini, okay? And then people thought Tony Curtis actually looked like Houdini, okay? The funny thing, of course, was Houdini um, was meant in the film uh, to have died inside the Chinese water torture cell. And they smashed the glass with a big hammer. <coughs> the water came out of the cell. But and in that film, I think, Houdini actually gets drowned and dies. But how did Houdini really die? Did he really die in the Chinese water torture cell or not? Okay, to be honest, um, the real truth was not that. He actually was um, unfortunately uh, punched, I think, uh, in the stomach. He was doing, he had a weird fixation with being uh, punched and taking punches, believe it or not, Houdini. And he was downstairs in his dressing room one night in 926, October 1926. And a guy came in and asked if he could punch Houdini to see if Houdini could take the punch. Houdini goes, yeah, you can punch me. This guy did punch Houdini in the stomach. Houdini was fine and got away with it. But in fact, he actually developed a kind of, um, a kind of, I think, appendicitis. Went on stage the night after being punched and then uh, went to hospital and then checked himself in hospital. He developed peritonitis, okay, in the stomach area and the, and the intestine area. And unfortunately, uh, he actually died a few days later, October 31st, 1926, okay. That's Halloween when he died in 1926. Okay, strange, isn't it, okay? He, of course, he was survived by his wife, the lovely wife, Bess. And of course, Houdini had a funeral and was buried up, and, uh, up in, I think in New Jersey or some area of New York, basically, or some part in the New York area. But very tragically, it was a very sad ending. And Houdini, of course, didn't die the water torture cell. He actually died from being, unfortunately, punched in the stomach as a kind of a dare, basically. Uh, and that's kind of how it was. The guy who punched him, I think, if I remember correctly, we'll have a look, the guy who punched Houdini. But I remember the, the name, I think his name was Whitehead or something. J Jocelyn Whitehead, actually, unfortunately, very sadly, he died in 1954, actually, amazing enough. But he's the guy who actually uh, struck Houdini and uh, led to the peritonitis, led to Houdini's premature death. Now, Houdini did die quite young, as I said. He died, according to Wikipedia, he died, of course, Halloween. Um, let's have a look here. He died Halloween, uh, October 31st, 1926. So he was 52 years old. And it was in Detroit, Michigan, actually, when he died of peritonitis. So this guy's an amazing guy. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of videos about Houdini. Some of them are very detailed, life stories of Houdini on YouTube. Please check YouTube out for the videos of him. This guy was a legend, okay? He was a great, he was a great magician, a good magician, okay? And he was a good illusionist, all right, okay? He was, he was really an escapologist and went on to be the greatest escape artist, es escapologist of all time, bar none, and pretty much impressive person. And the magicians, escapologists came after him. I think Murray, came after him in the UK, Alan Allen came after him in the UK, and they're all very good escapologists, okay, but nobody really quite equaled the legend of Harry Houdini, the world's greatest escapologist, quite interesting stuff, so it is. So I hope you enjoyed it very, very much indeed. That's a kind of a nice little overview of, of the great Harry Houdini. As I say, he did really have extraordinary life, and if you look at Wikipedia, born March 24th, 1874, died Halloween, October 31st, 1926, he's 52 years old, okay. There's a lot of stuff, even on Wikipedia, about his interests. Magic, escapes, movie career, the aviation, we actually got a, a Persian airplane, debunking spiritualists, okay, as I said, parents of voice recordings, his personal life, and of course, he's very sad, premature death at the age of 52 years old, okay. He also made quite a lot of interesting movies, I just tell you, including The Master, Master Mystery in 1918, The Grim Game in 1919 in Maine, he made Terror Island in 1920. A Man from the Yawn in 1922, and also a film called Holding the Secret Service. Pretty impressive indeed, okay? This guy really was an amazing. Hope you enjoyed it very much indeed. Please subscribe to our channel. Please click the links below for 110 videos of magic. Please check those videos out, please do. In 110 videos of magic chat illusion, please check those videos out, please do, okay? Please subscribe, okay? Get your COVID-19 jab, please do, okay? Look after yourselves. And uh, see you again very soon, okay, for some more magic from me, chat illusions, okay, and good stuff. See you later on. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.